Hey friends, your gal Wickety here. And this video, I'll be going over 15 of the rarest new item drops introduced to Stardew Valley since the 1.4 update. But before we get into the list, be sure to subscribe and drop a like if you wanna see more videos like this from me. I am planning on keeping videos coming until and after the new Stardew Valley update with some tips, guides, and let's plays too. And I do stream Stardew Valley and a few other games on my Twitch channel. Hopefully I'll see you there. All right, on to the video. So some of these items are rare monster drops and some you can find through other methods around the game, but all of them are new to this update and I'm gonna show you where you can get your hands on all of these rarities. Okay, let's get into the list. Starting off with drops from one of the newest baddies in Stardew Valley, the Haunted Skull. This tough monster has a lot of great loot that is pretty rare as well. The Haunted Skulls can be found in the quarry mine once you unlocked the quarry, and on quarry levels in the mines as well. Starting this list off right with number one, the Dark Sword. So this sword has actually been in the game files for quite some time, but has finally been introduced as a rare drop from the Haunted Skulls. You have a 1.3% chance that one of the Haunted Skulls will drop this sword. But what's so great about this sword? With it, you have an 8% chance of restoring some health back based on the amount of damage you give. I try to run in Skull Cavern with it, paired with the Slime Charmer Ring, basically just filling my health meter up with no worries of dying in a slimy infested level. Though it only happened to me once or twice, if you are holding the sword while taking an enemy out with a bomb, such as a mummy, that damage does also count for the sword, giving you back almost 500 health. Could be useful but uh, it didn't happen all that often. That's a great collector's item to be sure. The Haunted Skulls also have a few clothing items as drops as well, most of them unique to the new update, each with a 0.22% chance of being a drop. Number two, the baggy pants. <laughs> as a drop from the Skulls, it will be gray. You can tailor your own pair also with a slime egg and dye them to whatever color you want. Number three, the gray version of the relaxed fit pants. Not too bad looking. This can also be tailored by using a spring or fall fruit tree fruit. Number four, the dark bandana shirt. When dropped by the haunted skulls, the dyeable bandana is red. You can craft one also with either truffle or truffle oil. Number five, the dark highlight shirt, also in red, much like the eyes of the haunted skull on the buttons in the collar. My usual shirt of choice for my witch after I dyed it purple, of course. You can also tailor this by using either the life elixir or oil of garlic. There are also two other clothing items as well, the skull shirt and the skeleton shirt, but those aren't new to the update, so I didn't include them on the list. Number six, the artifact trove. This is another new item that can drop from the haunted skulls and it is a fantastic new addition to those trying to complete the museum. There is a 1.3 chance you'll find them from these skulls, but only if you've completed the vault bundle. And the only other place to get them is from the desert trader. Now I have gone over all the Desert Trader trades in a previous video, be sure to check that out for more info. There are 27 different items that you can find inside the troves after cracking them open over at Clint's place. Getting an extra golden pumpkin is all that I really wanted for that extra witch hat. The ancient seed is also found in these as well as some other harder to find artifacts. Number seven, the magic rock candy. Now I had no idea that this was actually a monster drop too. I originally thought you could only get it from donating 90 items to the museum or by trading three prismatic shards with the desert trader on Thursdays. You have a very tiny 0.13% chance of having one of these drop from a haunted skull. That's about a one in 769 chance, if my math is correct. 
Slim chance, yes, but these magic rock candies are crazy good. It boosts your mining by two, speed by one, and luck attack and defense all by five for a little over eight minutes. Definitely a very rare and desirable item, but is the grind worth it to you? Number eight, rice shoots. Okay, so maybe not as exciting as a dark sword or magic rock candy, but this new item is actually a pretty decent drop since the new update. Rice shoots can also drop from haunted skulls in the winter time, as well as from the occasional fishing treasure chest, artifact spot in spring, or a 10% chance from grubs and mutant grubs. You can also buy it from Pierre in year two or the traveling merchant. I've got more into why I love rice shoots in my 23 tips video linked below. And I find it can be a great first spring crop as it takes very minimal effort or maintenance. Number nine, squid ink. This is a new item that is needed for one of the new cooking dishes. And it is essential for those wanting to complete all achievements. The seafoam pudding you can craft with it boosts your fishing by four, which is actually pretty fantastic for those who are after some more difficult fish. Squid ink is a 20% chance of a drop from a squid kid, or as I like to call them, creepy baby faces. You can also farm squid ink by keeping squid or midnight squid in your fish ponds. Number 10, the Void Ghost Pendant, one of my favorite items on this list. First, for this to drop, you need to meet certain criteria. So you need to have max friendship with our dear sweet sewer shadow, Krobus. They love void eggs, which Krobus sells, so boosting friendship with them is pretty easy. You also need to have your home be upgraded at least once, and you can't be married. Kids are okay though. After all that, you can get the Void Pendant in two ways. One, if you have 200 void essences, you can trade at the desert trader. Or you can go hacking and slashing in Skull Cavern. There is a chance that the ghost pendant will drop from any monster as long as you don't have one on you. Why do I love this pendant so much? Well, after you get the ghost pendant, Krobus can be your new roommate, which you can shower with love and hugs. Who needs marriage when you can just live with your new shadowy bestie for all eternity? The last few items are all unique and rare apparel items with some pretty specific conditions to find them all. Number 11, the Squire Helmet. So the Knight's Helmet that you get from slaying Pepper Rexes is fantastic and all, but there is another hat you can wear before you mark that monster eradication goal off the list. The Squire Helmet is a drop that can come from these enemies, the Metalheads, that can be found in the Lava Levels of the Mine. I've found it a few times already, and it is a great hat that is a perfect starter for your epic quest to achieve the Knight's Helmet. Number 12, the Leprechaun Shoes. I have found these only a couple of times and the percentage chances are unknown to me. It used to be believed that you could only find these on a winter train, but in my 100 new features video, I found it during the springtime, so I know that that's not the case. Anytime that you hear a train is passing through, if you're lucky, there's a chance that that train is one that will drop these new shoes. I actually found three pairs off of one train, which was crazy to me. I wish those presents would drop out though, that would be pretty cool. The Leprechaun shoes don't have the greatest stats, but with the tailoring system, we can move stats from one shoe over to another. So if you like green shoes, you might want to pay attention next time that you hear a train. Number 13, the mushroom cap. The chances of finding this hat compared to the others later on this list might be higher, but first you gotta be really lucky and have a mushroom tree grow on your farm. The chances of a mushroom tree showing up is pretty slim. Sometimes it takes me years to get one to grow. They only show up in the fall. It's a rare event that has a 5% chance of triggering and the event will look over 10 random spots in your farm map. If you have either a full grown wild tree or stump that is untapped, and if it's on one of those random spots, the next day you'll have yourself a mushroom tree. And don't chop your first one down. Mushroom trees can spread pretty aggressively. Let them spread out a little bit before looking for this cap. 
If you happen to have gotten the event um, spawn on a stump, it'll grow into a full grown tree in the upcoming spring. You can tap these trees for more mushrooms, and if you choose to chop some down, you'll have that 1% chance at finding the mushroom cap. <laughs> Good luck! Number 14, the garbage hat. I have found this one quite a few times now, and it's always so terrifying when it does happen. First, you need to have checked at least 20 garbage cans around town. After that, it's all up to random chance. There is a 0.2% chance that the next time you scrounge for grandma's cookies, the lid will flip and you'll have found yourself a brand new hat. Super trashy in all the best ways. Now for the rarest item outside of an event that I am aware of in this game. If you have found this hat, consider yourself very lucky. I have tried starting 15 new farms to find this hat and I still haven't had any luck. Maybe someday <laughs> a witch can dream. Number 15, the living hat. This hat is literally just a bunch of weeds piled on top of your head and I've never wanted anything more in my entire Stardew Valley career. <sighs> The chances of finding this is astronomically low, and there are two methods. First, if you have the wilderness farm, you can have the wilderness golem spawn at your farm. You have a 0.01% chance, uh, which is a 1 in 10,000 chance of getting this from one of them. And that's actually pretty great odds compared to the other way. If you are searching for this hat, you gotta cut down a whole lot of weeds. And by a lot, I mean like a lot, a lot. Or just get really lucky. There is a 0.001% chance to find this from cutting weeds, or rather a 1 in 100,000 chance of getting this hat this way. That's why I haven't found it yet. Yeah, I give up. <laughs> Uh, thank goodness for the mods which made this video possible. Well, that's it for this rare item drop list. Which is your favorite from the list? And have you found any of the super rare items on this list like the living hat? If so, I am super jealous. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below and like and share the video with a friend if there's something new that you've learned. Well friends, this has been fun. I'm Wiggity and thank you so much for hanging out in the valley with me and I will see you in the next one.